Okay, thank you very much. Uh, this is the first time I speak to quantum engineers because <laughs> I don't really do quantum engineering. But uh, um, I talk about the materials and uh, about the work I've been doing and maybe something about the commercialization because that's the issue that is one of the one of the ideas in, 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 this, in our center. So I really thank the chairman and the organizers having me to speak here. So my talk title is Quant Materials for Quantum Engineering Applications, Carbon Nanotube Tilsons are Promising Candidates. And there's a question mark, so I don't know if they are good, but I'll tell that how we can make that, and they are good for something, something else, okay? So uh, we've been working with the nanotube thin films and uh, several applications, but mainly focusing on just very simple application, which is a touch sensor. And uh, now, uh, if you think about the way we use the touch sensor, uh, it's used capacitive touch sensor in almost every electronics. And now, if the quantum guys would invent something that could be integrated here, the market would be definitely there. But it should work at the ambient temperature, and it should be cheap to manufacture. But maybe that's possible. So we've been working on this. Uh, I started more than 10 years ago with nanotubes, and about 2005 or 2006, we came up with the first application, and then we started working on that and continued towards the commercialization. Also, we are working with the simple transistors and maybe towards CMOS uh, in, in few years. OK, uh, and now uh, if you think about the drivers for the market, uh, maybe there are similar drivers in the, in the quantum computing. Uh, for, the, for the touch, uh, uh, now everything is, is on the glass mainly, and uh, it's not uh, bending, but uh, uh, many people say that the flat is boring, and uh, maybe future devices might look like that. And now, actually, Samsung has this edge, which is a little bit towards this direction. But maybe the thing why they are not yet like this, that because actually display can be bended, but the touch sensor that we use cannot be bended, okay. And then we can see the flexible product evolution, maybe similar evolution might be with the quantum computing. I would agree with the earlier speaker that it would come with the current computing, not maybe alone, because you need to find your place. But now we have these uh, flexible things, our e-ink is unbreakable, is coming, then you have the read sheet, flexible, maybe rollable and maybe uh, foldable and maybe even 3D working. And uh, we've been working, uh, Canada is our startup company, especially working in this direction. And now we have the touch sensor that would make these available, okay? Uh, and then general, uh, there's a lot of talk about accessible and new kind of electronics. So, and uh, th that is mainly about the materials. Maybe quantum computer is not so about the materials, but I think the earlier speaker was, the first speaker was telling that uh, uh, we take materials as granted, but they come from somewhere, so uh, that's my, my part. Okay, but anyhow, current materials are not really flexible and, 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 and not printable, so. But uh, then one thing, if you think about the uh, application side, is to think about, is there a market really, is there a need? And uh, our startup guys have looked carefully the touch sensor market, and that's really surprisingly big. If you look at the touch panel market, because there are so many touch panel market, uh, is about 20, 25 billion per every year. Of course, the material, uh, the, the conductive transparent conductor is not all of it, but maybe 10, 20, 30 percent. So that is really, really big market. Uh, if you talk to investors, they always ask you, what is the market? What can you do later? So it was amazing that the guys in, in uh, funding computing have been able to live almost 20 years with the investor money. That's a very good accomplishment. Okay, and then um, uh, for the material point of view, if you look about the market and look what kind of materials is used in the touch panels and how much is being made. Okay, annually the area about the indium uh, dinoxide is about 23 square kilometers that is made. It's a huge big area. It's the size almost of the small um, city. Of course, we have billions of devices. And then if you think about what kind of materials are used to support the transparent conductor, Glass is the traditional material, but then the new material is the polymer, uh, which is bendable, okay. ITO is not bendable. Indium dinoxide is the semiconductor currently used. Like if you compare computing, we use normal most silicon, and the quantum is, is in the new way of doing it, okay. But why this is important for us who make it new materials is because then if we put a semiconductor on the, on the glass or on the polymer, the conductivity changes dramatically. So this is the, what we normally carry in the glass if we have the touch sensor. The seat resistance is about 10 ohms squared at 90% transparency, and polymer is much lower. 
Of course, the metal is somewhere here, but metal is, is not really transparent, and that's the issue. Uh, and then, uh, if you think about the uh, structure, uh, the actually, touch sensor is not so simple because ITO doesn't absorb, but it reflects. So, what we carry, we have about 16 to 20 layers in our touch sensor on top of the display. So, and interestingly, touch sensor is made pretty much completely by the companies, and no, uh, no, no uh, academics are joined on that too much. Okay. Okay, and then what are the materials that people are using? ITO is the one, and then there are the new ideas like nanowires, metal mesh, and nanotube used to be not so conductive earlier because people didn't know how to make it. Okay. And now uh, in, in, in Alto and Eva Startup, we have been able to push the nanotubes to come here. So, uh, and if you think about now the application for the, the maybe some quantum computing, if we could find something that could be Used. Maybe we don't need to think about computing, but something central, or some simpler application. Maybe that could be the way to go in Finland. Okay. So then, uh, my background is come to make the materials. These are the carbon materials. We have the uh, diamond, graphite. Then we have the fullerene nanotube, uh, graphene, and then combining these two. And uh, I've stuck to the nanotube simply because we can make good conductors from that, and they are bendable, stretchable, and also we can make good transistors. Recently, IBM came back to nanotube to really replace CMOS in the small device, just with the semiconducting nanotubes, okay? And then, uh, of course, we have the challenge with the materials. We don't really know exactly how to make them, what they are, but already we can make good devices, and we are learning a lot about that. Whether we can use in quantum computing, I don't know. I have not worked on that at all, so. Anyhow, uh, there are inter international efforts also. In, in, we put together with the Japanese and Europeans really the project that uh, rise to replace indium with the nanotube thin films for the transparent conductor, where our aim is to beat IT on the glass and also thin film transistors for the backplane, really beat polycrystalline silicon. And that's what we're working. We, have, uh, we work on the basic things on the synthesis, mainly at the growth, and then how to make thin films. Uh, and we have a team from uh, Tokyo University, Nagoya University, my group, and then also uh, uh, modeling people and, uh, and uh, some uh, ETEM people to study the growth. So for us, the basic research is mainly on, on here. If we can make the good material, we can make good devices on here. And then what we work with is the network. Now we have learned also to land down individual tube in my group. Normally tubes don't come individual. It's very difficult to keep them individual. But now we have learned. But even with networks, when we control the amount of the tubes, we can make very good transparent conductor and also thin film transistor devices that are not small but large in the scale. But the manufacturing is, is, is very important for the application. And then our startup company, it's, it's, it's Canada, we started uh, less than 10 years ago. We have not got so much money than these quantum computer guys from US, but uh, significant, about 10 million investment and about the same amount with the, with the government to build up the manufacturing mainly and demonstrate that we can make a really competitive uh, touch application. And this is the process, that was my long idea. So uh, I, my idea was to keep it as simple as possible. So we grow the tubes into the gas and then we land them to the, at the ambient temperature to the substrate to make the film. And even the random film, that's the good for the touch sensor application. And now we are learning to orient the tubes and even go to, uh, to the really uh, sub-micrometer scale devices and learning how to separate metallics and semiconductors and so on. But even without that, you can do a lot of things for the touch market, which is the big one. And uh, what the money has been mainly used to investment is to really scale up the production because uh, ITO is 25 square kilometers, so, and the cost is about $25 per square meter. So the cost is really also, you must meet the cost, no way to go to market if it's too expensive. That's what, what our company guys have learned. So now this is the picture about the facility in, 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 in Konala. It's roller roll direct deposition, 60 centimeter wide, and actually, the quality of the film is now uh, better than uh, its IT on the pet. And this is the famous picture where Dean is here and also the nanotube uh, inventor of Ichima Sensei. He visited us and uh, this is the picture when we got our roll to roll uh, massive running. Okay. And this is some example of what uh, has been done. Company works now with uh, the 30 plus customers and one case, a uh, few cases we can talk publicly. So this is to demonstrate the touch for the, uh, for the uh, 14 inch uh, computer, and this is then together with the Intel and Atmel. And Intel was interested to see is the film good, what, uh, what uh, we make, and also how does it compare to everything else. That's and so Atmel is the biggest chip uh, maker for the, for the touch drivers. Okay, and this is then the important result that uh, 
uh, conductivity uh, need to be good, as good as iron, but then in the optical thing is very important. Haze and uh, also uh, does it reflect, and haze uh, and uh, reflection is no, nanotube based material, it's the lowest in the industry, even ITO is, is, is matched, so this is very good result. So film is now good enough for the, for the big scale application. But uh, what about the quantum engineering? Okay, uh, I don't know, it, uh, maybe we could use on something, this is the last slide, so okay, I'm on time. But now uh, with the nanotubes we have learned to land them and, and we learn also about the structure and we are learning about that. So. Uh, whether it could be used, I don't know, but of course, um, I'm happy to collaborate with if somebody in the real quantum physics is working on that. But for the application, I would recommend to really look about carefully what to select and really think about, about the, what could be the application and start with the simplest possible one. That's my uh, last word. Thank you very much for your attention. All right, thank you very much, Esko. Questions or comments? So what's the simplest quantum application you can think of? I don't know. It should work at the closer to the ambient temperature than 20 millikelvin. I would think that would be very important if you could figure out something. So I, I, I'm discussing with Perti about something and maybe with somebody else, but a newcomer in this field for thinking about application point of view. Oh, yeah, Perti. Uh, yeah, I can say that uh, Graphene uh, cannot really compete with the uh, nanotubes in terms of cost. Conductivity is very similar. So graphene with the CVD is, is really too expensive. And to get good conductivity, you need to, you need to um, inter interface on both sides with the, with the boron nitride. And that is very, very expensive. So the cost is really the driver, $25 uh, dollars per square meter. So this process can do it. Solution processes can do it. So but CVD, no. The flat matter, the same for 2D conductors for the large area. Uh, that's right, there are some uh, lower quality nanotube touch sensors by the, some other companies, but uh, Kanato is on the way of going there. So, talk to company guys, I'm not in the position to tell about the business side. Okay, there was the last okay. question there. Of course, we are working on uh, trying to uh, uh, orient them and land on the given areas, in, even in the submicron scale. So that's the, what we are working right now. And of course, we need to separate metallics and semiconductors for these uh, small devices. This last area, we don't need separation. Maybe one question. This is important from the uh, visitor point. In indium supply. Is there plenty of indium? I didn't realize we we're making indium the element. Is that how abundant is that? Well, uh, indium uh, is not very abundant, but uh, the price is mainly political because it's, uh, China has the most, and they have been fluctuating the price a lot. So, but uh, we have enough indium, but the issue is that uh, if you want to get to flexible device, then you cannot do it with indium. Current devices, people don't replace indium because all the money is based on indium. All right, so let's thank Esco again.